Thanks, Marcelo. Uh, welcome, everybody, to our second episode of season two. So, Marcelo last week uh, talked about objects and object creation. Uh, the recording is up on our YouTube channel, so if you haven't got to there yet, or if you missed the live event, then you can watch the recording afterwards. So we had, yeah, last week, uh, today I'm going to be talking about curtain wall. Uh, next week, Marcelo is going to be talking about Rhino Grasshopper and the IPCAD connection. And the week after that, we're going to have uh, Zenru talking about uh, their real-time collaboration with uh, kind of multiple locations. So that will be on the 21st, so for the next two weeks. And after this series, we'll then start organizing the third, uh, third series. So we'd really appreciate uh, feedback, like topics you might be interested in. So yeah, coming up um, in two weeks, so we have um, Goy Architects uh, talking about their collaboration between their offices. So be sure to, uh, to attend this one, um, but also attend Marcelo's next week as well. So today I'm gonna to be talking about some tips and tricks regarding the curtain wall. So maybe some unusual uh, use cases for it or trying to think a little bit out of the box uh, with the curtain wall. Because not all projects have a curtain wall, but you can still use that kind of grid system to create, uh, to create some details. So let's get stuck into it. And uh, Marcelo is gonna be in the background, so he's gonna uh, uh, mention any questions. So if you have any questions, there's a little speech bubble icon in the uh, palette or in the window. And yeah, you can just right there. And start typing. Yeah. And Marcelo will hopefully read them out for me. But uh, yeah. if you also want, you can unmute your mic and yell at me <laughs> if you need to. But uh, we'll try to leave that maybe towards the end. Okay. Get out of the slideshow and into Archicad. Okay, give me a second. Uh, okay, so the curtain wall. Um, maybe some of you have started using it already. So let's start with kind of the basics of the curtain wall first. So here I've just placed a curtain wall and I'm just going to have a look at this in 3D. Okay, so this curtain wall is the out of the box curtain wall. So all I did was uh, get the curtain wall tool, use the default settings from the international template, and just uh, two clicks. So just two clicks to create that curtain wall. Okay, so for this curtain wall, I've placed um, a couple of walls next to it. So for example, this might be within uh, walls but already I can see a little bit of a problem where the boundary is kind of from the center point. So it's intersecting with the walls uh, on the outside here. And I want to place a door through here as well. So I'm going to go through how we can do that. I'm going to go to my uh, curtain wall settings. And in the top level here, so we have the boundary placement. Uh, currently at center, which is the default, but I'm going to choose inside so it doesn't collide with the walls on the edges. Okay, so that fits in a little bit nicely uh, better now with the walls. So now I want to put a door through here. So currently it's all being uh, set up by the pattern. So the pattern, if I go to the scheme here, we can actually set up the panels and the frames into a kind of preview into a scheme and then this scheme gets repeated however long the curtain wall is and we'll go through some more uh, details in the next kind of half an hour but for now I just want to door through here so I'm going to go into edit mode and just spin this around a little bit so I can see the frame that's kind of currently uh, dividing these panels and I'm just going to delete that frame and so it's taken the larger panel and just extended it uh, right down to the base. And with this panel selected, I'm going to use my info box up here. So change the member type. And I'm just going to change this to a curtain wall door. So double click. 
and I place the door. So another problem that I can see is that the door has a kind of boundary frame to it. So I want the boundary frames, but I don't want one where the door is. And you'll notice that the frames are divided as per the grid lines of this uh, curtain wall. So this uh, bottom frame under the door, I'm just gonna hit delete, simple as that. And what it's done is move the door down to the uh, kind of boundary to the to the uh, frame. So basically, there's a boundary uh, line here, and the boundary frame sits on top of that kind of outer boundary. Uh, it's worth noting that there actually is a frame here. So if I kind of look at the scheme grid and turn off my frames and panels then there actually is a frame down here, but it's just being set to uh, invisible. So when you delete it, it basically turns that frame to invisible uh, for the boundary ones. But uh, just hitting delete will uh, will do that automatically. Okay, so this is how we can get a door, uh, for example, into a curtain wall and fix up the boundaries, uh, boundary frames. So the uh, door goes directly to the base, to the ground level. Okay, so that's the first example. So the next example I want to go through is taking that uh, curtain wall, so out of the context of actually a curtain wall and turning it into something else. Obviously it's still kind of a curtain wall, but uh, here I've got an example of just having frames where we've just got frames and we've set these to just a simple uh, frame and we've actually removed the panels. So this is kind of like a um, like a lattice work or shading system that we could have. So let's see how how I can create this. So if I open up the settings dialog of this one and look at the scheme of this. I can see that uh, this scheme is actually set to a deleted panel. So all I did was select the panel and change it to a deleted one. So there's technically kind of a space there, but I've just removed the panel. And it only has one frame on the side, which is a mullion frame. And there's no frame at the top, so the top is also set to division. And for my columns and rows, I've set the rows to be number of divisions. So regardless of how high this is, is how high this is, it's always going to fit one row. So it's always going to stretch uh, this value here. And for my columns, I did the same thing. So I set number of divisions and I said I wanted 20. So if I change this down to 10, then it's going to resize all of the columns to fit exactly 10 uh, within the length of the curtain wall. So I've set this down to say just 10 and okay. And now we've divided this into 10 pieces. But if I stretch this, so if I now stretch this to be shorter, it's still going to divide this into 10 pieces. Mm -hmm. so if you want a, a kind of a rough gap that you want, then we can modify this. Yep, Marcelo, you had a question? No, 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 I was just uh, agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So instead of number of divisions, so this will always divide regardless of how long the curtain wall is, we can switch to best division which I find is a quite a good option because it will divide this uh, length into roughly 900 pieces. So it will maybe 905, but it will equally uh, distribute kind of roughly around 900. So say if we want a gap of uh, say 300 mil between these with the best division and go okay. And now if I stretch this, then it creates more columns, but it always sort of distributes those correctly, roughly around 300. So it will get less. So if I go really small, then it's only like three. Yeah, 
So here we can use this for, I think, uh, quite a useful shading kind of system. And if I stretch the height of this, then you can see that I'm stretching the entire thing because the, the row height was always uh, one division uh, over the height of this curved wall. Uh, on the system itself, I can slant it. So if we want this slanted, I will show you later about drawing it uh, directly on the floor plan. So if we want this to have an angle of like 80 degrees, then we can also have this slanted. Okay, so if I then switch this back to just 90, so it's vertical, uh, we can also curve this uh, kind of system. So maybe it's a kind of a, not maybe a kind of a railing or something like this uh, because of my marquee. Yeah. It's being off. yeah. So you so have to use have... curtain walls for a certain like kind of railings before. Yeah. Before yeah. the railing tool. Another thing, uh, we can draw the curtain wall vertical. So this could be actually like a shading, uh, horizontal. So this could be a shading device, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll show you an example of kind of that in a second. Yeah. So the frames that I used, so the scheme is just set to a deleted panel. So I'm only using frames in this and only one frame. So I have no frame at the top. Uh, I've still got the boundaries in and my frame settings. I've got my mullion frame here just set to a kind of a butt glazed uh, system. So kind of a simple rectangle uh, with you know, kind of a default size. And the material that I used, I've just set it to timber, for example. And my boundary, I set to the same uh, buck glazed frame and also timber, so they match. Okay, so taking that kind of concept a little bit further, I'll move on to a second example. Okay, looks pretty much the same. The only difference here, so if I open up the settings dialog, then here we're actually using a profile. And also the mullion is also using a profile. So this uh, rectangle shape, I'm actually referring to a profile that I've drawn. So I'm going to play around with kind of like rotating this and we'll create a version which doesn't have the boundary and has it horizontally rather than vertically. So what I might do to start with um, is remove the boundary uh, for now, because I don't think I really need this. So I just want kind of slats. So to remove the boundary, we need to go into frames and go to our boundary frame. And I'm just gonna turn this to invisible. So you have to have technically a boundary uh, frame type, but we can just turn it to invisible and my gap, I'm going to just make zero just so there's no little gap around the edge. Uh, we'll use this uh, a little bit later when we're using panels, but for now we're just uh, wanting to kind of turn this off. So I'll go OK. And now we have a curtain wall with just uh, verticals. And this is referring to a profile. So if I go into the settings to my mullion frame, which is doing these verticals and check which uh, name that I'm using. So here the uh, profile buck glaze frame is using a one that I've created just earlier. So curtain wall frame to rotate. So this is what I'm gonna do now. And then let's see what happens. So I'm gonna go into my profile manager and this one, so this one is currently being used for this curtain wall. So I'm going to go edit. And I'm simply just going to rotate from the center point and I'm going to rotate it uh, 45 degrees. And then hit save. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go back to the um, 3D, you can see that it's using the same profile and now all those panels or all those frames are now to, uh, rotated 45 degrees. So now it's very easy to 
actually customize exactly the level of detail that your your frame has right mm -hmm. yeah so i could put a lot of detail into this like a lot of cutouts and stuff but yeah. obviously the more detail you put in the more polygons are, are going to be generated so i generally recommend to keep this as simple as you can so for example do you really need it, it to uh, appear hollow or can you just do the outline of the uh, yeah. object and if you need to detail, let's say separate, you don't need to put all the curtain walls with with a high level of detail. You just put, you know, the one that you will document it. So also like managing a BIM file is is about us choosing, you know, which battles we want or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so now it has that ability. Sorry, James. The fact that it has that ability doesn't mean that we should use it everywhere in the file, right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. I find that curtain walls tend to be quite heavy uh, in polygons just because there's so many details and you can add so much yeah. into it. It's easy to kind of get out of control a little bit. Yeah, it's a very complex architectural element. So curtain yeah. walls, stairs, normally if we want to have a lot of detail on them, uh, actually Archicad allows to do that, but it, it can drag down your file uh, quickly, especially if you have a lot of elements like that. And in Asia, I the buildings normally have a curtain wall, so we should choose wisely how to manage that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. know if you're going to cover that on the on the um, model view options. Are you going to show that? Uh, I wasn't, but yeah, I can. I can. Yeah, since I suggested, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, okay, okay. Maybe not for this one because I've only got uh, frames, so it's yeah. not going to. Yeah, yeah. Another one. Another one. Okay, so for this one, I want to now change it to horizontally. So I've got it vertically. So let's see how we can change this to horizontal. So maybe it's a sun shading kind of device. So I need to change my scheme because currently it's just got a, a deleted panel and a vertical frame here. So my top frame here, I'm going to change that one to the mullion. And my vertical one, I'm going to say uh, none because we don't want anything here because we just want an extrusion across. And I need to change my divisions around the other way. So my vertical divisions, let's say best division, like what we did in the first example. And maybe the gap is about 500 between. And my columns, I just need one column over the entire thing. So instead of 20, which is what I have now, Change that to one, so it just stretches the whole thing. And hopefully that will change. Okay, so I need to change uh, the gap uh, a little bit less. So I'll go back in and maybe down to 300 and okay. So now I can see my uh, slats are kind of like a shading device. So if I need them rotated the other way, I can just edit my profile and I'm just going to mirror this around the kind of axis. Save back in the 3D and now they're rotated the other way. So you could have a few different uh, versions of this profile that maybe have different angles. So if I just uh, extend the height of this uh, curtain wall, Yeah, then we can see that we can just increase the, the number of these slats. So it's quite an easy way, I think, to get kind of louvers uh, into a project. Okay, so let's now have a look at another example. So this is the uh, just dealing with frames, so not using any uh, panels. So let's have a look at an example where we're just using panels, but not um, not any frames. So kind of the opposite. So here's one I've just, here's one I prepared earlier. And if we take a look at this curtain wall, what I've done is just have a grid of uh, two, two rows and two columns. Each of them are just a 500. I'm using a fixed size. So I've actually set the length to be divisible by this uh, fixed size because I don't want a little piece kind of at the end. 
And my panel system is just a two by two, where two of the panels are set to distinct, and then I've got another two panels that are set to main. So I wanna create a new system and also update this one where I kind of want it to look more like, uh, like kind of bricks. So where it's kind of staggered. So what I'm gonna do is uh, make a copy of this curtain wall and then we're gonna modify that uh, panel system. So if I just, uh, yeah, make a copy of this, show this in 3D and I'm going to start modifying. So I still want two rows, but I want three uh, columns. So I'm gonna create another column and I'm gonna reduce these uh, dimensions down a bit. Uh, so maybe 200 each. Okay, so we want basically a panel here. Uh, maybe I need to make this wider. Maybe I'll make it 300 so it's a bit better proportioned. Okay, so I want uh, basically a panel here and a panel here, and then they'll kind of sit together at the at the next uh, when when it gets repeated. So uh, let's say the gap between these two panels, instead of being a division, I'm going to say none. So this will make one panel. And then the division between these two panels, I'm gonna do the same, so none. So that creates a panel. And now I want the division um, between uh, this one, so this one I need to set to none. And this one, just to make sure, uh, no, that's not gonna work. So I think I might have to play around with this a little bit more because I think it's just going to create a panel here. So this one, I technically want to merge to another one here. So let's create another, um, another column. Okay, that's better. So this one, I will set to division. And then this one, I'm gonna set to none. So that merges those two. And then this one, I will set to none. So it creates one panel. And I'm gonna set this to a different type of panel. So we have a interlaced kind of system. So let's see how this works. I may need to extend the, the curtain wall, but let's see uh, kind of what happens here. I'm gonna go okay. And now I can see I've got a staggered uh, system. So if we increase the length of this, Yeah, so now we've kind of got it staggered, but uh, I kind of need to see it a little bit clearer. So what I'm gonna do is modify these panels. So I'm gonna to go to my panels and in my main panel, I'm going to change uh, not to be glass, but I'm actually gonna use a different type. So this is kind of a built-in basic panel. I'm actually gonna switch it to a composite panel. So it's made up of different skins, but I only need one skin for now. And I'm going to choose uh, kind of two different colors. Um, so maybe apply one, I'm gonna just increase the thickness and I'm gonna rename this one to say apply panel. So I remember uh, later. And my other one, I'm actually going to copy the settings and then modify. So this ply panel, I'm just gonna copy those settings, go to my other panel, which is a fixed uh, built-in one. And I'm gonna paste those settings and then change my skin to something else. So I'm gonna maybe say a timber so that we kind of have a dual uh, two-tone kind of timber. And let's see how this looks. I should rename this. And then, okay. Okay, so now we've got this kind of two-toned uh, timber, but I wanna have a little bit of a gap. So it kind of looks a little bit uh, cleaner because now it's kind of merging together. So I'm gonna open up my preferences and I'm going to go to my uh, 
scheme. And basically all the gaps between are set to division. So I need to create a new frame type that is basically a gap that I can then assign to these, uh, to these ones. So I'm gonna to go to my frames, add, and I'm just gonna call this gap. Gap, okay. And I'm gonna say it's invisible but it's still going to have a gap of like uh, 20 mil. So from the center point to the next one, so the total distance between the, each panel is gonna be 40, uh, 40 mil. So in my scheme, I now need to assign these, uh, these uh, gaps between the panels to this new gap uh, type. And the top ones here. And the side one here, and this one as well. Yeah. Okay, so let's see how that looks uh, now. So go OK. OK, so now it's a paneling system that kind of staggers. And you can imagine this kind of gets placed on a wall. We can also, in our panels, uh, maybe one of them, I actually want to stagger so it uh, sits out. So we actually have an offset for these panels. So I'm gonna use a kind of a larger number just to show kind of what it does. So I'll say one is 100 and then okay. And now you can see that I've kind of staggered half of them away mm -hmm. from the other, other half. So you can kind of imagine the the flexibility you can have with these kind of uh, systems, these kind of panel systems. Okay, so there was one more um, system that I wanted to show just regarding this uh, one using the profile. So I'm just going to create a marquee around these ones. So James, actually on that profile with the shading device, there's a, yep. a few questions about, you know, you've, you've shown how you could um, place on the, on the different uh, frames, different angles, right? So you would have to go to the manage the profile and change it. So they're asking, you know, if you want to have like different angles, uh, which workflow would you recommend to duplicate the the frames and then apply it to the to the scheme. Can you show? Are you going to show the pattern in that sense? Uh, you could have, you know, two or three different angles and then you use it. Uh, all within the same within the same curtain wall or with different curtain walls. I think within the same curtain wall, you have that shading device. Everything has the same angle, right? Let's say you want one with sixty degrees, the other one forty-five, another one thirty. And then that would be a pattern that you would replicate. Mm -hmm. So you want to one, 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 and then maybe they kind of like move up as they go along. So we could go. Well, I think that we could have a pattern, let's say 30, 45, 60, then 30, 45, 60, you know, something like that. Okay. So let's uh, change this one to. And when, and when we say it's like three, it could be more. It's just that, you know, you have to repeat or do a, a bigger pattern and you do a bigger, uh, more number of profiles. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Robbie is also asking, uh, can we assign more than two panel materials? Uh, absolutely. Uh, so, as many as you want, yeah. Yeah, so it's just a matter of, you know, the you, you're almost like designing a pattern, right? You can do a pattern with two elements, you can do a, pa a pattern with, you know, 20 or 30, then it just becomes more difficult to manage whenever you want to change it, that's all. Yep. So let's go. Let's say 30. And duplicate it. 45. I'm going to go 60. Actually, like, normally in like beam tools, if you prepare like the types of elements that you want to place. Uh, in this case, if you have like the different profiles that you want to place, then it's it's quite simple to go and change it in the design. And even 
probably you can show by going on the editing mode, you know, that we can actually apply a different profile. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so I'm going to play with this one first with those new types that we just created. So my frames, I'm going to say this one is uh, 45 down. Add and then 45 up. And this will be the the first one. And then add another one and 30. Okay, it's the re reverse 30, but you get the idea. <laughs> and then uh, horizontal. And this will be the yeah, 90. So in my scheme, uh, we need a few rows. And let's say the bottom one is, uh, yeah, 45 down, then 60, I think. No. Yeah, I think that's right. And then this one would be horizontal and 30 and 45 up. And we don't need the top one. But let's see how that looks. Uh, yeah. yeah, I may need to play around with a little bit more, but. Uh, you kind of get the idea. Yeah. So it kind of uh, waves. Yeah. So the more the more uh, variations we want, the the more uh, profiles we need to create, and you know, choose the pattern for it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think obviously, like the more repetitive the elements are in a curtain wall, the more effective it is to use a curtain wall. If you have a curtain wall that the whole curtain wall is custom, it will take you a long time to model it, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I got to points in projects that I model a curtain wall with separate windows, with separate beams and separate columns, because it was there was nothing that was repeated basically other than the profile of the beam, the profile of the column, and the there would be like the mullion and the trasm, and then the panels, right? So mm -hmm. Sometimes yeah. you can also do just a, a curtain wall that is just the panels. And because the mullions and the transoms are custom, you model them separately. So it can be done also. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So and you'll notice, you'll notice for the 90 degree one, it's uh, because it's going horizontal, it's, uh, it's vertical compared to, so in my preview, it's horizontal. So when it gets placed along a horizontal member, it kind of goes this way. So you need to make a version yeah. of it. You know, it's the other way. Yeah, because it's following the, what you're dealing with. Yeah. It's following the the plane of the. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Yep, yep. So, so in your in your complex profile, the plane is horizontal, and since you're modeling vertical, then yeah. you will follow that direction. Yeah. Okay, so I want to create uh, one more where it's just a boundary. So we created a kind of a more interesting. So I'm just going to duplicate that. And I'm going to remove, or actually, I'm going to remove the whole pattern. So I can just press, press the X and it will clear out the whole pattern. And for my frames, uh, I'm going to remove these because we still have them in the other curtain wall. So I'm just removing them for this duplicate. Uh, I'm, I'll actually select all of these and remove. And it asked me just the conversion that I want to make. Uh, so I'm just going to say division for now. So okay, and my boundary is currently set to invisible, but I want this to be the uh, profile that we used for here. But I'm going to use a different profile that I made, uh, which is this boundary one. So we created this boundary one. It kind of has a more interesting kind of uh, shape to it. And I might make my curtain wall a little bit lower, so down to three meters, and OK. So now you can see that I've just made like a picture frame. <laughs> so mm -hmm. the profile that I've used for this one 
we just go into edits, you can see that all it's doing is that's the origin. So that's where kind of the center of the frame is going to be. And my frame, uh, my curtain wall is kind of horizontally uh, in this view. And it's just to cut out a bit of a shape. And then when it gets applied, you can see that the, mitre, uh, the corners get mitered. And we could then use this as an architrave. So if I get my lower uh, boundary frame, just delete it. And you can see that the, the, the side ones then extend down to the bottom line. So you could, you could potentially use this also for a kind of an interesting architrave uh, detail on a building or around a door. Uh, for a door, you could still then use columns and beams, especially because now they do uh, cut angles but then this is maybe another, another idea. So I'll just make this a little bit shorter. So it's more like an entrance way. Okay. So this is a uh, kind of vertical curtain walls. So let's have a look at uh, a flat uh, curtain wall. Uh, if we still have some time. So I'm going to go back to my curtain wall and I'm going to, instead of just doing a horizontal line or a curve, I'm going to use the boundary method where I'm going to trace around this one. So I could use magic wand, but I'm just going to show you kind of what's happening. So you can see that as soon as I'm extending, it's uh, pushing the boundary uh, to my kind of extremities. So I've just drawn the boundary and now it's uh, made a flat uh, curtain wall. So if we have a look at that in 3D. Okay, so currently I need to modify this curtain wall to actually look like a ceiling. And you can see that it's around the wrong way. So as a ceiling, like uh, I need it kind of reversed. So if we select the curtain wall and just um, flip, then now it's in the right direction. So for this one, I don't need a boundary, for example, and I'm gonna turn all of my frames to just a butt glazed and a smaller panel size. And I'm going to kind of modify the uh, panels so they're um, kind of more uniform uh, sizes. So in my uh, scheme, actually frame first, because I'm gonna change the boundary frame to just be invisible. So you could use a small little frame around the edge as a trimming, but I'm gonna turn this invisible for now and just say zero uh, as a gap. And I'm gonna use one frame type. So I prefer this transom one. So I'm gonna delete the mullion and I'm gonna convert anything that is mullion currently to transom. So now everything will be transom. Now I can start modifying my scheme and start modifying these sizes. So let's say the columns, uh, so maybe at 700, I'm gonna say 700. And maybe we only need a four panel system because maybe we'll have one panel that is uh, kind of a lighting or something like this. So maybe something like this. And let's say this one is going to be the main and I'm going to switch this one to the distinct. And I'm going to see how this looks. Okay, so currently I, so it's better. So we can see every kind of second one is uh, this kind of glass panel. Uh, I could switch that out to be a uh, solid one. So maybe instead of being glass, because that doesn't make much sense for a ceiling. So my panel, uh, my distinct, I'm going to just say as a solid panel. And then let's say this one is going to be the lighting panel. Okay. Uh, and then this one, instead of being glass, uh, what I could do is create a surface that is like self-illuminating. So that's, a, that's an option. Um, I think I have one that is like plastic. So let's just say plastic solid for now. Just so it uh, 
isn't see-through. And okay. Okay, so this kind of represents maybe the, the lights. But I want to rotate this whole curtain wall so it's kind of the other way around, so 90 degrees. So let's see how we can kind of modify that. So in my floor plan, I'm going to go edit. And I want to just edit the scheme. So instead of turning this on and all the others off, if I just right click, it will switch out the uh, which one is on and which ones are off. So that's a handy. And I need to then select my curtain wall. So for example, the corner here. And I get a little pet palette and I can drag the, the scheme around and also rotate the scheme. So I'm gonna rotate the scheme from uh, horizontal to vertical. So I just rotated at 90 degrees. And if I need to then move it, then I can kind of move it a little bit. I'm gonna do this just by eye uh, for now. Okay, so I just wanted to uh, basically kind of like slits on the side here. Yeah, I could make, make it a little bit better. So let's go exit and check in 3D. Okay, and then we have our rotated uh, panel system for the ceiling. Okay, so this is how we could do ceilings. Um, I think it's often good to have this like inset and then maybe have a slab kind of around the edge. So let's maybe create that just around the edge. So I'm going to, actually there's a slab here already. I'm just gonna duplicate it and then I'll raise it up. Uh, I'm gonna offset all edges. So we want a, like a 300 mil kind of a border around the edge. Minus, so, and then I need to lift this up. So I'm just going to uh, set this, I think, to about three meters. I need to check what the ceiling is. And I'm gonna just change this to a single uh, skin and I'll just set this to be a plaster for, for now. Okay, and then how does that look like in 3D? Ah, my curtain wall is quite low. <laughs> okay, so I'll just elevate this curtain wall up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was a bit low. Uh, so three meters. And then my ceiling obviously is way too thick. Okay set 50 mil and it's uh, going from bottom up okay so then we've got kind of this trimming around the ceiling yeah yeah because of it like generally you would have this bulkhead maybe maybe this is uh, deeper as well because often you would have this bulkhead kind of yeah. around the edge yeah yeah and again i think that uh, we've talked about this before in previous sessions on, here on Archicad now is that sometimes we we use tools that are you know you would think about a curtain wall you wouldn't be doing a, you know, a suspended ceiling with that but if you look at it every time that you have a repeated pattern the curtain wall is a great tool for that mm -hmm. so I even I even used it let's say in a swimming pool deck which is basically uh, you yeah. know uh, a panel that is repeated many times and you could even go to the profile and even have all the little dents of it so that when you go and let's say render it or do a section if you really want to highlight that it can be done so think about repetitive elements and use the curtain wall tool for that mm -hmm. yeah yeah so, even bathroom tiles, for example, when you want to see the gaps like really modeled or some stone cladding like James already showed, some ele so let's say some lift uh, lobbies that you want to have, you know, the, the stone around the, the lift doors and on the floor. It, it really depends. And especially for interior design, this is a great tool because often we have to model repetitive elements in interior design. And if you have to model, let's say that wall that James showed with two different patterns and you have to do it just with, you know, 
modeling little the tiny walls that would take a long time even to change it so let's say you decide to do just three rows vertically you just go to the pattern and you increase it and then it will you will be modeled faster right mm -hmm. yeah 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 i've seen um some using this to create tiles so if there's an existing tile system on a wall yeah. that's very specific then you could use a curtain wall to create that those tiles i think for a bathroom tiles like if they're mosaics i probably wouldn't use a curtain wall yeah yeah but uh, I agree. Normally, tiles. I would go like for stone cladding, or if it's tiles, like when they're big and you want to see the gap in between them. Another thing, uh, I don't know if you want to show the, let's say if you want to put frames on the edit mode, that would be, you know, uh, skewed to the normal. Mm -hmm. let's say you want to do some frames that are 45 degrees to to the to that system, for example. Right, you can yeah. just go on the edit mode and draw another frame that would have they could start somewhere and just end somewhere. So even on tilings, whenever you have those floors that have a very complex tiling, you know that there are a lot of angles in it, it can be done as well. So if that frame becomes invisible, it's the gap between two tiles, right? Mm. Yeah. So I could just say invisible and the gap is yeah 50. probably a bit so big now that's okay. a, a, a gap between two panels yeah so it's a very useful uh, workflow for these kind of things yeah. yeah like there's actually a lot more detail so i didn't talk about like the boundary editing of the curtain wall that you can also make any shape yeah well uh, RJ here is asking, okay, in terms of file handling, will it be too much to process? So again, uh, what we mentioned before, we have to be careful. We can't let it, you know, go too much into detail on this. If it's an interior design project, normally, you know, we would model space by space. So I think I would say it would be fine. If it's, mm -hmm. let's say, a shopping mall and you're doing the whole floor tiling for a whole shopping mall, you could probably even do that in a separate file and then just link it there so it's not as heavy or you have just a schematic view of it so yeah it really depends we have to how we manage it so james yeah. if you could show just quickly with the model view options how we can have you know just the the pattern yeah. you know without having the geometries Okay, so we can go into the curtain wall options here. Yeah. And I can say, uh, just turn off frames, and I can then take the uh, the resolution, basically, of the elements down, so the, the LOD. So if I just turn off frames, then it only shows me panels and the other things. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I can make them just a kind of a, a line yeah. just to get the sense so in an elevation this might look better because otherwise it's going to show too many lines yeah if we show all the details yeah then let's say the panels you don't want them to have you just want let's say solid boundaries so it's like a box around the panel or you want just a flat one so mm -hmm. in this way the panels will become uh, simplified yeah. so you see the frame that james has done before separating the two becomes way simpler yeah yeah so if this was a more complex uh, cutout then this would just turn to a box for example so this can help with the polygon count as well yeah okay so yeah uh, I was going to show you just one quick thing and mm -hmm. then uh, just to kind of wrap it up yeah so yeah. Over here, I have like a, a multi-plane roof and a morph. So if you're doing like massing and stuff like that, mm -hmm. uh, what we can do is then get the curtain wall and I'm gonna say pick plane and use the boundary method. And if I just click a plane to, to move sort of my editing plane onto that, hold spacebar, click, then it's actually gonna fill in that plane. So this is on a roof or a slab or 
or this is also on a morph. So this is a, a morph face. So space bar and click, and it will trace that uh, that polygon. That's so I think this is also a good way to yeah, yeah to go from kind of schematic into more detailed uh, design. Yeah, yeah, that's that's very useful, especially you know, in early design stages. Like you say, if you have a geometry that you're going to use it as a reference, you can then make the curtain wall pattern or the, the whole curtain wall to adapt to that surface. Yeah, it's quite yeah, useful. Yeah. Yeah, great stuff, James. Thanks, thanks for sharing. Cool. Uh, any more questions, I, anyone? Yeah, otherwise I can go back to the presentation. Yeah, yeah. Was there I any other questions? No, no, I think we went through most of them, or, or all of them. Okay, uh, great. If not, if somebody else has more questions, feel free, you can even open up the mic and, and join us and talk to us. Yep. Uh, uh, so kind of yeah to finish up um again follow us on social media so we're posting like the videos and things like this um uh, to our like facebook uh, in, um, instagram um linkedin as well oh sorry maybe i'll keep that a little bit longer yeah so you can just take a snapshot so ian lander and Catherine are asking if a panel of a curtain wall can have projections. Yes, so uh, actually we didn't go through the, the 2D representation of the curtain wall in the floor plan. Yeah, there's so much more of the curtain wall we could go through. Yeah, probably we can leave that to another time, but yes, Catherine, we can choose same way as a door or a window that we can choose a projected uh, representation. We can do the same for curtain wall panels. And we can even define uh, that no, like three-dimensional projection. That means that instead of a flat panel, it has three-dimensional. Three like a sumo wrestler. <laughs> like a like a sumo like wrestler. A, instead of just a flat plane in the yes. panel, it, it projects. Take on a three-dimensional shape. Have yeah. A so, so if the panel is like that, and we choose the projected, it will show that. So. If you let's say do like a, a belly on on the panel, you you can have that, so, but you have to to create a custom panel for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. uh, Terence just just uh, and and RJ just said that, so okay. it is possible. Yeah, as 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 James mentioned, these sessions, you know, we try to put up <laughs> something, and I always tell we prepare for twenty minutes. It will take us forty or fifty. So. But yeah, we yeah. we could do like a curtain wall of session number two where we go even more in detail, right, James? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it'd be good to show how to create a save a custom panel and then use that. I think that's quite yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, next time we should do that one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we will upload this video in a few days um, to our uh, YouTube site. So if you kind of wanted to check up on it, uh, all of our previous ones are here as well. And we also post uh, our user days and also some custom videos that we make. Uh, for example, like this Y column we uploaded. Mm -hmm. uh, just a, a refresher. So we've still got uh, training courses. Uh, we had, I think, a couple of weeks ago, but we have also for July, uh, sort of mid to late July. So we still have basic uh, Archicad and advanced courses. Uh, positions still available. Yep. And just a reminder that tomorrow our uh, Building Together event uh, starts. I think it's about 8 p.m. Uh, Singapore time from memory i think it's not uh like a full day so it's only um a few hours i think so hopefully it's not too late into the night here yeah, it will be but a couple I'll of hours gonna... every day yeah and i think so that hopefully... it starts at 7 or 8 p.m in singapore time so right after after dinner and you can watch what other architects uh, key users worldwide of archicad how they're using it uh, you can see also like the exciting new stuff that Archicad 24 will have for you. Uh, I think most of you are eligible for it, so I think it's really valuable event to, to look into it. We will later have a localized version of this where we will focus on 
on you know what are the local advantages of Archicad. So this is more like globally, and then we will say, okay, we can use this feature for this kind of thing that you normally need to do. So yeah, yeah. just register for it if you haven't, um, because it will be quite interesting, I would say. Yeah, I think it will be really good. And, so, and that's the that's the kind of last slide. So it's just a thank you yeah. after that. Yeah. So I'll give so, you enough time to take a photo. Yeah, just nice. It really helps yeah. us as well. Yeah. Hello. So, hi, James. Yes. Um, can you hear me? Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, I actually have a question regarding this um curtain walling system because we once we started using curtain walling, we actually experienced um, in terms of documentation, there is actually an issue where we only have the standard, um, what do you call this? Whatever palettes that we have inside our our setup, it will be displayed in a schedule. So even though we actually have it worked out, say for example, a pitch profile, but it only shows the standard module. It's not the whole panel itself. Okay. So in terms of construction, later on, if we were to actually show them the whole panel with dimension, uh, is it possible or we have to do it separately through elevations? Because the schedule itself doesn't show elevation, it only shows an axonometry. Yeah, yeah. I, I, so, I see what you mean. So I, in that case, you should do a schedule, not of the curtain wall, but you should do a curtain wall panel schedule. So yeah. you're, you're scheduling the sub elements of the curtain wall. Understand? So, so basically, if you want to document the whole curtain wall as a whole with all the panels, the elevation view, uh, you're correct, is, is the only one that would show all like the arrangement of the, of the panels on the whole curtain wall. When we schedule a curtain wall, the whole curtain wall on the schedule, uh, those panels that are customized. Uh, by going to edit mode and change, they will not reflect that. So we will reflect the initial curtain wall that you've done. If you want to reflect that and schedule panel by panel, you should do a curtain wall sub element panel uh, schedule. I, I hope that this was clear. If you want, then uh, you can. Uh, we can have a session with you to to go through this. But uh, yeah, the short answer is is that. Okay, understood. It's okay. I, I think I will just follow up with James, and then we'll see how to work about yeah, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Okay, sure. about what I said, right? Uh, is this is yeah. this clear? Yeah. Yeah. Because um, uh, to a, a full curtain wall with uh, like the whole system that's in place, yeah. because that's uh, uh, modeled in place, uh, we can only kind of schedule the the default settings, I guess. Yeah, but exactly. We can do panel by panel, and that will show you the shape. But just yeah. not the entire thing, so we would still need to do an elevation. Uh, or, or yeah. when you place it the first time, you already have the custom panels placed there on uh, through the the curtain wall dialog box and not through the editing mode of the curtain wall. I I, I faced that many times. Is actually if you know that that is going to happen by modeling that way, you could probably you know predict that. But after it is done, it's very hard to you know, redesign or redo it. Uh, but yeah, let's let's follow up separately, and we can we can uh, target this issue. Yep, 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 yep. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Okay. Uh, my last slide is uh, thank you. Okay. So on a little bit uh, a little bit over the uh, yeah. forty minutes that we were hoping for, but ah, uh, it's all right. I think people are okay to give us a little a little bit of extra slide. <laughs> So, uh, any more questions, anyone? Uh, we know this is a very interesting topic, um, but I think we have to revisit the curtain wall, uh, James. It's such a complex to, uh, yeah, tool or architectural element that you know, no choice. We have to to spend a little bit time, more time on it. Yeah, but hopefully, hopefully, it kind of helps to open people's mind a little bit. About yeah. the curtain wall is not just a curtain wall system. So. Yeah, yeah, more like as a design tool for repeated patterns. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think that's the biggest take to take from today's session. Yeah. Okay, so 
Guys, thank you, everyone. Uh, if there's no further question, we'd like to uh, say thank you, uh, say goodbye, and see you next week. And if you guys could join the tomorrow uh, sessions on building together, that would be quite interesting. So see you next week and take care. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Okay. Bye bye. Bye, Catherine. <laughs>